Jaya Jaya, Shiva Rajaya here from vitalcoaching.com. The topic for this video is create spaciousness for each other. I want to dive a little bit deeper into this topic because I think it's one of the essential keys that we are missing right now as human race. Creating spaciousness for each other means releasing control over somebody else, over what they think, over their actions. Creating spaciousness means bringing space, freedom within the context of relationships, romantic relationships, family life within the context of social life with friends, for instance. Imagine that I have this really good friend and um, this friend make, makes a choice in his or her life. And then I try to interfere with that choice, give, um, you know, unrequested advice and start trying to direct that person's choice because I have a certain agenda or a certain vision or a certain experience of reality that is different than that person. So what I'm literally saying when I'm forcing myself or forcing my views or forcing my opinions or my beliefs or my ideology on that person, what I'm saying is that I trust my truth more than I trust your truth. And in the, in, the, in the process of doing that, what I'm doing is I'm trying to project my control over somebody else. So this can be done in a very soft way. You know, it can be done in a way where, for instance, I, I say something like, are you open to some reflection on that? And this is soft. But very often, it's going to be in the form of saying something like, you are wrong. What you are doing right now is a mistake, you know, and this puts my friend under pressure. If you do that within the context of relationships, you know, within the context of relationships, a romantic relationship, if you are married with that person and the person with who you are being uh, romantic, with, you, you, with who you are sharing sexual energy, you, you are really opening yourself up and then that person projects um, that judgment, sometimes it's resentment, sometimes it's, it's criticism in your field then what you end up doing is you end up not trusting yourself because you have a source of influence that, that tells you that you cannot be trusted. That person might be projecting into your field something that sounds like, I know what you're doing and you are making a mistake or you are doing it wrong or you are not communicating in the right way or you are making choice that I disagree with. And what I'm saying right now when I say those things, it is that I don't trust your ability to self-source your truth. Your truth doesn't match my truth and therefore I'm going to try to change it because I have a certain agenda or a certain desire about you behaving in a certain way and right now you're not behaving in that way. And so if you check within the context of romantic relationships and even in the context with, between countries or on a larger scale between communities, uh, eventually what we end up having is like friction that builds up and conflict that builds up because we are not, um, we don't have the capacity and the ability to release control. <laughs> you know, the controlling power that we have in our lives, the controlling power is a very specific power. And we are born with the right for self-determination over our own personal life, right? I'm, I was born with the right for self-determination for my thoughts, my beliefs, my actions, my personal space, my time, my money, um, my choices, my direction, my destiny line, all those are things that I'm given the right to choose. Now, when I'm forcing my views on somebody else and telling them what to think or what to believe, then I'm, I'm betraying uh, their right for self-determination. In other, in other terms, I'm robbing them from their basic human right to have their own opinions, okay? This is expanding it a little bit to the next level. But the thing is that if we take that, uh, you know, one ex the, the, the next step to what can happen between nations and ideologies and different cultures and different races and different communities, uh, then eventually we have an escalation of of uh, friction because there are two realities that are clashing against each other and uh, what we want is for one to win against each other you know this happens between religions it happens between communities and countries and uh, it's really um, unfortunate because I think that we can do way better as human race if we understand really how to use our controlling power so 
the way I choose to use my controlling power is to first influence and have a sense of ownership over my own life. Okay, I look at my own dynamics, at my own existence, I look at my thoughts, belief systems, I look at my emotions, at my choices, I look at my energy states, what I eat, the way I use my time, and all that stuff. And I realize that if I invest 90% of my controlling power within that reality, that's going to be a very fruitful and very successful use of my control. When I'm trying to control something that is out there, imagine that I have a friend who is making certain choices somewhere on the other side of the planet, you know, what is my, my power, my right, and my ability to control that person's thoughts or choices? It's very little, so I'm going to be wasting lots of energy trying to influence that person. And sometimes, you know, I'm going to be a positive agent of their evolution and eventually bring in maybe a, a positive influence that is going to help them make the right choice. So what I'm giving you right here, you know, it's, it's not black and white, okay? The navigating life and the way you use your controlling power is an art form. It's not just a linear you know, sequence of things where you just take take one uh, quality and one strategy and you keep on applying that all the time. No, it's way subtler than that. There are going to be certain situations where I'm going to try to influence a person's choice because I have the feeling they're making a massive mistake. And yes, I'm not trusting their choice because I have the feeling that I have a perspective that they didn't think about or, you know, so it's not black and white. I'm also influencing people. But the quality of expansion, the quality of spaciousness is a, a quality that I have a feeling is missing right now in the context of romantic relationships, in the context of social life. We need to expand an open space around each other. You know, when a, a friend shares a story with me and I can see that they might, you know, I might have responded in a, in a certain way in a given situation, what I can say is, you know what, um, I think that in, if I was exposed to the same situation uh, um, in my own life, I would probably make a different choice. I might say that, and I respect your choice, and I fully trust that you are following your truth and your higher self in, in, uh, in the choice that you are making right now. So this offering of space, you know, this offering of, of creating freedom and creating space, I think it's something that is so nurturing, and we really underestimate our ability to actually make a person feel really, really good and feel free and feel expanded and feel safe in our presence. You know, if I, if I meet you and I give a, you a, a very expansive hug and I, you know, I say things like, I trust your truth, I trust your freedom, I trust that you know what you're doing, I trust your judgment and I trust your ability to make, to make your own choices in ways that, you know, are aligned with your, your experience or your perception of reality. It's, I trust you, I trust your ability to self-source your power and uh, your ability to see through, I think that you're wise, you know? So that creates a dynamic, which is the dynamic, dynamic of creating spaciousness, creating expansion and creating freedom. It's releasing control instead of contracting and being like, unless you behave that way, you and I cannot be friends. Unless you have that specific belief, you and I cannot be friends. I'm going to unfriend you. I'm going to block you. I'm going to kick you out of my life. You know, or I can be like, well, it looks like we disagree on this topic and it's fine. I'm going to create spaciousness to give you um, enough uh, space and freedom to, to follow your own truth and your own dreams and your own reality. Again, uh, take that within the context of romantic relationships and realize that probably, I would say, 80, 90% of the frictions and the fights that you have within the context of relationship, the reason why people break up or divorce is because the relationship they are in has become too small or too constricting. And very often it's related with the other person, yourself or the other person, having a, a restricting impact where you go, if I want to keep on evolving, I need to get out. <laughs> I need to get out of this matrix or this relationship space or this matrix that we created together. I need to get out of that to be able to reclaim my freedom and to be able to keep on evolving. And uh, so if you want to stay together, if you think about, you know, that's my partner for life, the core quality that you have to implement is offer enough spaciousness within the context of your romantic relationship 
to be able to keep on evolving, okay? If the control patterns are too strong, for instance, if I have a lover, partner, and this person comes to me and says, I want to start a new business, or I have this idea about something that I want to cultivate, and I block that intention, then that person will have to take distance from me to engage into that specific dream or that specific reality. So let's look at that from that perspective. Uh, I, I really do believe that uh, creating spaciousness for each other is really one of the core, really beautiful qualities that we can implement and, and manifest way more than what we are doing right now. For me, what it means is opening the heart, opening trust, opening freedom and opening space. And this is not doing it from a place of naive, you know, everything is love, blah, blah, blah. No, it's like it's really crowded. I want... The people who are in my field, my friends, my social circle, my romantic partners, my family, the people that I influence through coaching sessions, I want every person to feel really empowered in their sovereignty, in their truth. If I'm constantly trying to grab and control on that other person's reality, I'm going to limit their freedom and eventually for them to keep on evolving, they will have to step out of the relationship or the connection that they have with me to be able to keep on evolving. And so, personally, I want to commit myself to opening space, creating spaciousness and creating freedom. Okay, let me know how this resonates with you. Do you have somebody in your field right now that you have the feeling is really creating this spaciousness and check how it feels for yourself? Do you have somebody in your field who is limiting your freedom and really constricting you? Is this something that is happening right now? Did it happen in the past? Um, is this something that you are actually doing for somebody? Do you, are you really good at creating space and really honoring one person's, that person's freedom and, and spaciousness? Or are you somebody who tends to need to control and limit that person's uh, freedom and, and space? Is this something that happens within the context of your uh, romantic relationship, your love life? Is this something that is happening within your friendships or within uh, your business or professional life? Let me know what you think. I'm really interested to, uh, to hear about your experience. I love you. Love each other. Create spaciousness for each other. I'll see you soon.